we, we had an 8 o'clock gathering this morning at the historic Triangle. We had a record number of people there. So this morning in the sanctuary is a relatively modest group. It's also the last full weekend of the summer, really. Labor Day weekend is coming up next weekend. So it's a time of transition for many, many people. Are there any announcements for the life of the church before we actually be move into worship? Um, okay, go for it, Kit. Um, microphone. 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 Use microphone. So that people on Zoom can hear you. Is it on? Okay, you tell me what the, uh, okay, there's something happening with the mission and committee. Go ahead. There's, and if okay. you would like to add to the money we're spending, um, I think Gail has the information. Okay, speak in the microphone now. I can hear it. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> Woo! All right, good. So the mission committee is, has already sent the first round of a donation to Haiti to respond to that crisis. We know there are other crises going on, such as New Orleans being hit by a record hurricane again. But right now we're responding to the multiple catastrophes that have hit Haiti, earthquake, hurricane, so many things. And so if you wish to make a donation, we did send out at least one email. We can repeat that email for folks that wish to make a contribution, but we will be sending out the second the follow-up donation this week. So um, time is of the essence for this response. Um, several denominations are working together through existing emergency response teams that are already there to put whatever donations we make to the most meaningful use possible with relief organizations that know what they're doing. So yeah, Meg? Excuse me, the, the uh, church also is sponsoring a team the, um, at for the Alzheimer's Walk on Saturday. Is it September 18th? Yeah. And um, we also are accepting donations for the Jen's Friends Climb Against Cancer. So for both of those, you can send a check to the church marked for either one of those causes. And hopefully we'll be getting a team of people to walk up Cranmore together um, as a church team. I'm going to start working on that today. <laughs> we, we, need a, we need a captain for the Jen's Friends Walk. There, there might be somebody in this room who's been the captain before who I might be staring at who might be willing to. I'm, I'm looking at Fred. I'm hoping that I can volunteer him into becoming the captain. So we'll see. We'll let you know if I'm successful. No pressure. Um, let's be clear that uh, if you if you support the Alzheimer's team, that research and that work is national. Jen's Friends is a very local response to cancer here in the Valley. So your heart may be moved by very specific causes and you may wish your response to be local, national or international. And in the two announcements that we've just made, whether it's teams that are walking for cancer, or Alzheimer's or the response to Haiti, you are already hearing that our church is active locally, nationally, and internationally. So you can choose how you wish to make an impact. You can choose how you wish to participate. You are invited to be part of the response to the causes that move you, that touch you, that are the way that you choose to make a difference in your corner of the world. Other announcements for the life of the church. Are there any announcements out in the zone that I missed? Sandy's scanning for me. No, okay. Then Alan's gonna play us some centering music and we can actually really worship together.
for the gift of technology, the gift of a calm presence, and the gift of music. We give thanks for Alan as a part of our ministry team. Please join me in the call to worship, which you will find either in the program or up on your screen. Listen. If you hear my voice, I will come into you and eat with you and you with me. That comes from the book of Revelation. And from there, we move to the prayers that we lift up together, prayers of concern and prayers of celebration. We've already mentioned New Orleans. We consider all the places where storms have been surging and hitting and flooding, where there are fires burning. We think about Afghanistan, the plight of people that live there, people who are trying to leave there, our leaders who are trying to create transition, the dreams of people that are changing. We think about our first responders and we think about our military, people like the Marines, like our National Guard who respond in times of emergency and become our front line, our firefighters, our police, the people that know the hardest truths about us, the most difficult truths about us. As, as a police officer told me this morning, meeting people because they've done something bad, they've seen something bad, or something bad has happened to them. We think about the people that are called into these professions and then hold life and safety and creation and very peace of the world in the tenuous clasp of their presence. What prayers would you lift up together today? We'll start in Zoom. You guys have been so patient. Let's hear your voices if you have a prayer you wish to lift up. No prayers. Okay. Then prayers for those in the sanctuary. Are there any of concern? Kevin has one, so we're going to bring the microphone to Kevin so we can all hear him. I think most of you by now know Kevin, either from meeting him on Zoom or here in person. <laughs> okay. Um, for Reverend Gale and Chris, and Reverend Gale already said the first responders, the military, all first responders, the president and the vice president, the nurses who cared for me at Rochester Hospital, especially Lauren and Brianna, um, for Jason and Kim and Pastor Nathan and Dan and Dick. So Kevin is is asking us to think about those who choose a caring profession in other places, our nurses, our doctors, our mental health care workers, our social workers, people in nonprofits, in hospitals, in institutions of many kinds, in schools, in prisons, in hospitals, who, again, become the support system, the family, the friend, for people who are cut off in so many ways from community. Then I, yeah, go for it, Meg. Um, I'd like us to consider and pray for our church, our former church member and good friend Donna Shigalite, who had emergency surgery this week, where she lives in Florida. And of course, everything was complicated by the COVID situation there. So mm. she was quite alone in the hospital. I just want to pray for her quick recovery. For Donna. And our our church treasurer, Donna, is home recovering from her second knee replacement, doing brilliantly, by the way. Um, she's always way ahead of the curve. 
but she asked us to pray for a very good friend of hers named Paul, who um, is in intensive care with an unexpected aneurysm. And that outcome is unknown. We turn to any prayers of celebration, and then we will pray together about all of these things. Here in Zoom, does anybody have anything they're happy about? I got new skis. Uh, so, Deanna, no? Deanna, yes. yes, Deanna got new skis. I can't hear you, Sandy. Deanna? I got new skis. Got new skis. Can people in Zoom hear Sandy? Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> you can't hear her. Okay, Alan's working yes. on that now. There's always something exciting going on here. <laughs> Sandy, type your type your prayer into a chat, I guess, because somehow our people in Zoom can hear you and we couldn't. Or unmute and try again. Alan, can she try again? Deanna got new skis. Okay. All right. That was the happy news. Okay, cool. All right. Oh, it was Deanna. Maybe I couldn't hear. Huh, I don't know. No, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay. So Deanna, Deanna was, got new skis. Deanna was posing with her skis and she sent me a video of herself wonderfully skiing. These are the skis, right, Deanna? And then she wiped out water skis. She was Those like, snow skis. I got new snow skis, but I was water skiing this week. Okay. Well, she's been on all kinds of skis, new snow skis, and <laughs> she was on water skis. I've seen her do an Olympic wipeout, apparently, on video. Other happy news in Zoom. We're all happy. Okay. You're all happy. That's great. Sandy says they're all happy. How about here in the sanctuary? Is anybody happy? Happy that we're, Kevin's happy and Bob and Kit are happy. All right, let's hear Kevin's happy voice. He's actually laughing. That's good. Let's hear him laugh into the microphone. Um, I'm grateful not to be confined, confined in a hospital and be able to sit, be, sit by the river and listen to music. Um, I'm grateful for the gappy love I have for others and the unconditional love I have for others and God, especially those two kids in the wheelchair. And i um, glad God loves me and teaches me lessons. Grateful for all the people who care about. Thank you, Kev. And Bob and Kit. Just two things. Uh, I'd like to nominate Alan as man of the day for his great musical and technical <laughs> talents. And I'd also like to welcome Kevin back. It's great to see you again. There's a pause in the sanctuary for Kevin being back and visible to us. And I'm grateful for all the um, people returning from wonderful vacations and renewal and the gardens that are producing plentiful vegetables and fruits for us all. My neighbor has apples for me, and I picked my beans when I got home yesterday. So um, grateful for this time of year. All right. Yes, may, may as many of us as possible enjoy fresh produce. Uh, Cindy is our per personal farmer. She always has fresh produce. There's probably some in the back of the church. If you're around, you can have some. Sorry, guys, and um, that part, I, by the time I mail it to you, won't be any good. You can have tomato paste that's like not yummy anymore. Let's pray. O oh God of goodness, O oh God of gardens and wilderness, of the places that are groomed and tended and nurtured that feel safe and like sanctuary to us, the little corner that was once the home of the first church here in Jackson and is now a small woodland park held in trust the great swaths of land that we preserve and protect, our mother, our earth, who connects us all because she is home to all of us. 
we live together in this place, this world, and we have called out to you a few of the names, oh God, New Orleans and Afghanistan, Jackson and Mount Washington, parts of our nation, homes all over our world where pain and healing are mingled, where fear and love coexist, where hope and denial are cousins. We ask that you will be with those who have chosen to be on the front line of response to all kinds of situations, medical, pandemic, those who did not choose where they find themselves and live in the midst of it, war, poverty, violence, at home with someone you love whose body or mind is changing, who goes on a journey that no one chose but that everyone takes together as long as they can. And when we pray for one body or one home, we are praying for all of our homes and all of our bodies because together we are your body. We are your children, we, our lives, our hearts, the places that we live and love, we are your kingdom. Your kingdom exists here as it does in heaven. And so we ask, O oh God, that you will turn your attention and your presence to the places where we are, where the places and the homes of those we love also need your attention. And the places that we have never imagined stepping foot, people we have never met and for whom we have no name, but whom you call your children, in the ways that love can go there and cross the distances that we cannot, we ask that you will find a way into those lives, those minds, those hearts, and those places. We offer you a moment of our silence. And then we lift up our voices together as we say the prayer that you first taught us. And please unmute if you are in Zoom so we can hear your voices too. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven. Hallowed, be hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy, kingdom come. thy will be thy done. done on earth, on earth as, as, it is in as, heaven. as it is in heaven. Give us, Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive, and forgive us, us our sins, sins as we forgive, we forgive those who sin against, against, against us. We us not to temptation, temptation, but deliver us, but from, deliver us from evil. For thine is, thine is the kingdom, the power, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We're only going to have one unified song today besides the benediction, and that's coming up right now, Alan. So we're going to sing... I think three verses of Seek Ye First. Oh, two, there's only two verses, so there, we couldn't possibly sing three. It's on page 443 if you're here in the sanctuary, and please rise if you're able for this song. And you'll also find the words on your screen.
anybody in Zoom hear that? Okay, just making sure. Please be seated. I'm not trusting my technology a whole lot this morning, so we're doing a lot of double checking to try to make sure everybody's getting a chance to have this experience together. We have a reading from Matthew 7, verses 7 through 12. Ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds and for everyone who knocks the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who if your child asks for bread will give a stone? Or if the child asks for a fish will give a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? This is followed by the golden rule. In everything do to others as you would have them do to you, for this is the law and the prophets. Then it says, enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction and there are many who take it. The gate is narrow and the road is hard that leads to life, and there are few who find it. So ends the reading. I ask then that you would pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, however we may gather, in your presence, O oh holy God, be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We chose both sections of this story, the advice to knock, to ask, to seek, combined with the idea of the wide open gate and the narrow gate, because between them is the golden rule which in some ways Christ says is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. In everything do to others, as you would have them do to you. I hope you can hear in this the echo when someone asked which of these is the greatest commandment and Christ responded, love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all of your strength and love others as yourself. To do unto others is to love others as you would love yourself. And so to enter the narrow gate is simply to be guided by love. But sometimes to be guided by love is hard. The work of love is work. Sometimes it's easy. When I meet people that I'm counseling and they're bright-eyed because they're going to get married and they're all focused on what dress, what dinner, what cake, that's wonderful. But that's not the heart of the conversation I have with people who are preparing to spend a life together. I want to know, how did you meet? What embodies your relationship, your partnership, the covenant you hope to make with each other? How do you handle the hardest of times? Give me an example. What do you love most about this person that you are choosing as your partner? And when we go into those places, they're conversations people often haven't paused to have with each other. Chris and I did premarital counseling in three different places. We, we met with a Protestant minister who had a had us do like a spin game to prepare. We met with a priest who gave us the Catholic requirements for why you should get married, but then sort of off, off on the side said, you know, it, it's, a, it's a lot about being friends and having a really strong team together. And then we went on an interfaith 
retreat. And that's where really hard questions were asked of us. What do you see yourselves doing in five years or 10 years? Have you talked about things like money, children, your goals for your career, where you want to live? We were posed questions that we had never maybe paused to ask. And we weren't allowed to just answer them off the cuff. We were given those questions. And then we each had to keep a journal and we wrote our own answers and then we exchanged journals and we read each other's answers. And then we went into a deeper conversation. That's just to prepare to marry somebody that you believe is the right person for you. We come across people all the time that we're asked to love and it's not easy. But even in this, Christ uses humor. He says, "If are there any among you, if you have a child, you love your child. Yes, we know there are parents that aren't able to love their children whose greatest loving choice has been to give away their child to someone else's care. But in a family where parent and child can be together and it's the best scenario possible, he says, if your child asks for bread, would you give your child a stone? Well, Chris even had an answer for that. He's like, yeah, if they were making stone soup, fine. There's always an exception. If your child asks for a fish, would you give your child a snake? No. He was being silly. And he was showing you how ridiculous it is to imagine that you would respond with anything but love to someone whom you love. But then what he tells us is that Yes, you have boundaries and limits to your capacity to love each other. Of course we do. We are human beings. We hit those limits all the time. And that's okay. God works through the imperfection of our imperfect capacity to respond and love each other. And he, she, God, love, makes it enough. God's love flows through us. And we know we're not the perfect vessels of love. There's nobody that I can claim is a perfect vessel. I'm certainly not. But together, we become enough. We become enough to respond sometimes in the most pure form of love at a hurricane or a fire or an earthquake or in the early days of the pandemic. when everything is thrown away and all that matters is the human that you see in front of you and you're not worried about what divides you and you don't ask the person who you're rowing the lifeboat to or putting the ladder up to, um, what political party are you? You reach out your hand because you see a human being and someone reaches back if they're able and accepts the love you are offering, or maybe you're the one reaching out your hand because you need the help, and there's somebody reaching back who pulls you up or pulls you out or grabs you and holds on to you and keeps you afloat or gives you the hug you needed, responds because you are human. At the end of this very paragraph, Christ says, if you are capable of giving that kind of love to your child, you would never give your child a stone unless it was to start some stone soup with a lot of Cindy Gilmore's great fresh vegetables thrown in to make it tasty. And you would not give your child a snake when your child expected a fish. How then can the source of all love be imagined to have limits to that holy love that is given to all of us? Institutions are great at deciding, hey, you're in or you're out. I think those people deserve love and those people, mm, I'm not sure that they're gonna get in the door. It's a narrow gate, but it's only narrow because it is defined by love. And anyone who is guided by love can walk through it and walk that way. God's love is bigger than any boundary or barrier or definition of what we think makes someone unworthy. 
unable to receive love or support, God will see past all of it. And God will turn something terrible into something you couldn't imagine. God didn't make the terrible things happen, the earthquake, the fire, the floods. But God works inside those things because God shows up as the love that runs towards those hard places, not away from it. And gives us the chance to make meaning out of something that we couldn't have imagined. This week, I found out that the golf tournament that we hosted over at the Wentworth two Tuesdays ago, the one that we weren't even sure we were going to pull off because we didn't have enough sponsors and we thought we would lose money instead of breaking even. And we were like, this is, but then our church administrator was like, come on guys, let's do this. And so we did it. We pulled it off. We got more sponsors. We had just enough volunteers and we had some great teams go out. We raised significant funds for our music program, but other things were happening. The team that won was a team of boys who are avid golf players from our own Jackson Grammar School. And one of them is named Cole. And what none of us knew except his own family was that he was wearing a baseball hat that belongs to his dad. And he was playing for his dad. And they won. His dad was on hospice. And he died two days later. And yesterday we held his memorial here. And this church was full of people that will have never walked through the doors of this place before because they're Black Mountain skiers. And guess what they do on Sunday? They ski. They're here most of the time on a weekend to celebrate the beauty of this wonderful earth and this beautiful place where we are. But yesterday they were wrapping up this family who is on this incredibly difficult journey in community and in love. And Cole and his dad had moved here and the family goes back and forth. Part of the family's in mass, part of the family's up here. He attended the grammar school and this is where he found his corner of the world. And his dad was with him. And so he's connected to the year round people here as well as the seasonal people. We didn't know that four boys that were playing golf who won were going on a bigger journey than 18 holes. And his father's remains are interred on a cemetery past which he can play the next time he does 18 holes here. We don't know, but we say yes to the chances to turn towards each other. And sometimes bigger things are happening than we could even have imagined. This place was full of families that don't really usually have a reason to be here, but they did yesterday. And somehow we got stitched into that story and we became part of it. God is kind of amazing that way, taking something that's hard or something that seemed simple but that we almost didn't do and turning it into something that had more happening than we could even imagine. Imagine how many stories are under the surface of people's lives and when you look, you don't know. You don't know that the child that you're talking to in that baseball cap is saying goodbye to someone he loves. You don't know that the person you're taking a walk with has a partner at home who is changing. We don't always know each other's stories and maybe we don't even have to because sometimes when we just do what it says in the golden rule, if we do to others what we would have them do to us, in the cash register line, passing each other in the parking lot, driving, 
wherever we're casually having encounters, we have a chance even there to get it right, to take a breath, be more patient, not knowing what's on the other side of the story, but possibly what you do, how we respond might be the one act of love that can help change something for someone. Love will go everywhere, beyond every boundary or border or door that we have closed and find a way. It doesn't fix everything. It doesn't promise that if you pray for a miraculous healing that you'll get it. It doesn't say that you won't have sad endings. This promise is that love will find you and walk with you in those places. And when you look backward and you think about prayers like the one that Kevin lifts up or the nurses or the other people that were kind to him in hard places or that are gentle and his friends here, love shows up and you may not always see it right away, but it does come and it will respond. And the love that responds doesn't care about your labels. It doesn't care if you're Muslim or Jewish or Christian. It doesn't care if you're Democrat or independent or Republican. It doesn't care if you're man or woman or on a gender fluid spectrum. It doesn't matter if you're 94 or four. There are no binaries in this love. There's a narrow gate, but it's only narrow because sometimes to love each other is hard. Sometimes it's easy, but sometimes it's hard. And we don't have to do it alone. We just do, as John told us last week, the next right thing and the next right thing that we're able to do. And those add up. And they add up because God's love isn't working in one person, but every person in this church that's gathered here, or every person that is listening to me on Zoom, every person that chose to take time to think about the world or the earth or someone else, God works through all of us. He said it with a joke. but he was very serious about what it means to love each other and to be part of the kingdom of a love that is bigger than we can imagine. Thanks be to God. Now we get the anthem that we were hoping for two weeks ago.
going on in the sanctuary <laughs> why not it's a beautiful song i know sometimes churches have rules like don't applaud because it's offered to god but you know what our applause is offered to god our appreciation of each other is offered to god it's all good mm. from here we move to just the reminder that these responses that we make when we send money to Haiti, when we help somebody put tires on a car or give someone a tank of gas or take care of this church or pay the salary of staff like Alan, it comes from the giving that you have faithfully continued to offer to us. And so we give thanks that you have been such a faithful partner, each one of you, uh, whether you give through jxncc.org or here in the church, there are little envelopes that you can put money into their plates when you come and go. However it is that you've chosen to be our partners, it makes a difference and we look like a small church, but I told a lot of people yesterday, we're actually very large. In the community, our impact is big. And the numbers of people who feel connected to this community are way bigger than the number of people that sit in the pews or zoom in. Look at the families that turn to us to become partners at the end of a very sacred journey. They've never walked through the door before. And here we are, and we're connected to them. And we give thanks for your giving and the ways that we are more than a building in a village. We are much, much more. What is holy, what is the temple of you? So brothers and sisters, wisely or unwisely, I had decided not to have a second hymn, so that's good because we took a little while to get our technology actually working. So we're going to move directly to our benediction. So if you wish to rise to sing the benediction here in the sanctuary and otherwise, we'll put it up on the screen for you and we'll sing ourselves a goodbye and a send ourselves out in peace. <laughs>
Sisters, go with the peace of Christ in your hearts, and may the peace and the love of Christ go before you. May it go beside you on your left and on your right. May that love go above you. May it be present below you. May it be behind you. And may it always be within you as you go in peace. Go in peace.